You're listening to episode 149 of Mid-America Reformed Seminary's Roundtable Podcast. In this broadcast, the faculty of Mid-America discuss reformed theology and cultural issues, all from a reformed perspective. I'm Jared Luchibor, Director of Marketing. Thank you for tuning in. In today's episode, Dr. J. Mark Beach, Professor of Ministerial and Doctrinal Studies, addresses a most peculiar question. Is hearing faithful preaching equivalent to hearing the voice of Christ himself? In in other words, is it appropriate to affirm that faithful preaching is indeed the very word of God? Well, in this episode, I'd like to talk about uh, the Protestant Reformation and uh, preaching of the gospel, particularly the way Luther and Calvin and others articulated how faithful preaching of the gospel is to hear the voice of Christ himself when the gospel's proclaimed. Uh, Most everyone I know wants to hear good sermons, wants the Bible to be opened up in a faithful way, wants the preacher to understand the Word of God and explain it in an accessible manner. That is, they understand what's being said. It's clear. And they also want to see that the pastor is sensitive to how the living preaching of the Word is bringing the message of the Bible into our lives, our circumstances, our problems, our struggles, our failures, our kind of cultural setting with its own kind of idols, and the things that tempt the church lead it astray. So preaching of the Word of God, the Bible, is essential because if you read the Bible and do not understand the Bible, or even worse, misunderstand the Bible, have you heard the Word of God? Indeed, your ears have received the message of the Bible, but has it been received by you accurately, or misperceived, or misunderstood, and then that which is misunderstood is declared what the Bible says, what God says. So this isn't a small topic. So it's not enough to say, well, we read the Bible, we heard the Word of God. Well, your ears did, but did your heart and mind receive what it actually says? Is the message received? This is why the living preaching of the Word is so important, because the goal of the Protestant Reformation, for example, and our goal today in the church, is to convey what is in the Bible in an accurate, faithful way and apply it in an accurate, faithful way. So message is received, not just words banging against our ears that come from the Bible as God's Word, but our hearts and our minds are receiving and understanding that message. So the Reformers uh, gave themselves the heavy-duty task of preaching the Word, and of course it was a very Word-centered focus for the reform of the Church. The Reformers produced pamphlets, doctrinal treatises, and thick books, but First and foremost, what they were about, Luther, Calvin, and many others with them, was ministering the word to the common people, preaching to them daily even, and they gave themselves very seriously to that charge of Paul to Timothy, preach the word. Now, it's important as heirs of the Reformation, we don't simply look longingly at the past, but learn from them to perform an important task today, to be faithful to that charge in our time, preach the Word. If you do not have a high theology of preaching, or if you view preaching as, well, my my pastor's opinion, and I happen to hold a different one, or if the pastor himself just sort of views preaching as a pep talk or let me share some thoughts I might have for your evaluation. That doesn't really capture the biblical portrait of preaching and actually quite misunderstands it. Because the biblical portrait is when the Word is faithfully preached, explained, and applied, what's happening is you're actually hearing 
and receiving by the Holy Spirit's work the Word of God, not just misunderstanding or misappropriating or maybe perhaps daydreaming and ignoring, but message received. And when this happens, the preached Word of God faithfully preached, is nothing less than the voice of Christ in our ears. So it's a way Word of God comes to us. Now, some people get uncomfortable with that. They feel like that's rather radical. But Calvin would remind us that when the sheep hear the Good Shepherd's voice, it's unmistakably not Reverend so-and-so's voice, but his voice they hear in faithful preaching. If we should perhaps take offense that God's word is being dragged down, its authority debased, when God employs mere human instruments to teach and preach, Calvin again would remind us that we need to see it a different way, that this is an excellent gift from God when he deigns to consecrate, Calvin's words, to consecrate to himself the mouths and tongues of men, in order that his voice may resound in them. And he doesn't have in mind here, you know, the inspiration of Scripture, although that's certainly first and foremost, but the preaching of that inspired Scripture. So Calvin when, when, uh, says, when God's word is faithfully preached, this is a ministry, a ministering of Christ himself to us. The mouths of Christ's servants, then, are to be reckoned as such. Of course, not when they're unfaithful to the Bible, but faithful to it, so that their lips are as his lips. In preaching the word, it is not, first of all, the human carrier, conveyor of a message, but Jesus who needs to come into view. And that's why Jesus could say to his disciples in Luke 10, verse 16, he who hears you hears me, and he who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects the one who sent me. I think we need a a renewed understanding of the importance of Sunday morning and Sunday evening, whenever the the gospel goes forth from the pulpit. Uh, the pew and pulpit alike, pastor and parishioners, need to grasp this. So whom do we come to hear in divine worship? My favorite reverend pastor so-and-so? Of course not. What do we come to hear? His ideas? Of course not. Isn't it Christ? the one, he's the whom we come to hear. And what we come to hear is what he has to say. So I think it's important that we're mindful that Christ has nothing but words of woes, woe for cities like Chorazin and Bethsaida and Capernaum. Uh, What does he say? Inasmuch as they refuse to listen to Christ's servants, they refuse to listen to him. Calvin even states in his commentary on that passage, Luke 10, 16, those who refuse to hear ministers, however humble, are not insulting men but Christ himself and God the Father. So I think it's important we get back to understanding something about what it means that the preaching of the Word is the Word of God. That idea is something that seems to offend at times, but it's actually even gained a a kind of confessional status. For example, in the Second Helvetic Confession, which I think many know is a, a very highly regarded Reformed Confession, uh, the chief author being Heinrich Bullinger, this confession talks about the Word of God and the preaching of the Word of God, and it says something that seems to startle a lot of people. It says, for example, in chapter 1, the preaching of the Word of God is the Word of God. Wow. Do we really want to believe that? Well, let me add this cautionary note. 
Of course, what it says is preaching of the Word of God, meaning that the Word is faithfully preached, the Word is believed, the Word is conveyed and explained, a misunderstanding of the text, a misapplication of the text, wouldn't qualify as Word of God. In fact, you know, when you get into this topic, I've talked about it for years, as long as I've been a minister and certainly a teacher as well, I found people uncomfortable with such ideas, the notion that the preaching of the Word can be the voice of Christ that we hear is a, a way that the Word of God is actually finally heard and understood. And it's important, I think, that we remember something we confess in the Heidelberg Catechism, for example, in Lord's Day 25, where we're told, and we actually confess as church, the Holy Spirit produces faith in our hearts by the preaching of of the Holy Gospel, and here the accent is on preaching. The utter necessity of preaching, I trust, is not in question, and that's why Calvin again would remind us in his Romans commentary this time that the Word is required for a true knowledge of God, but it's the preached Word alone which is the normal mode the Lord has appointed for imparting His Word. Now, why make such a big deal of preaching? Because without it, where do you get your Bible education? So that when you're doing personal devotions, you're led straight, or you're simply reading the Bible yourself and you're understanding it aright. Let's let's go back to this. If you misunderstand the Bible, have you, yes, you've, your ears have heard Word of God, but have you received the message of Word of God? There's all kinds of people who misappropriate the Bible, twist it, distort it. It's the Bible. It's the words of the Bible they're speaking or talking about. But in being misunderstood and misapplied or misdirected, they're not talking about the Word of God, but error. And so what Calvin's trying to help us see is that through the preached word, faithfully preached, we come to know the word of God, understand the word of God. And that's why it's such a principal and primary task of the church, because it's the living Christ's voice that's heard in faithful proclamation. We have that very important text in Romans 10, uh, 14 and 15. In this passage, we read, uh, and it's, uh, if, you, if you translate it very literally, how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? Most translations say in whom or of whom, but it's most literally translated, how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? It's from the Word of God, the Bible, that we may legitimately say faithful preaching is the preaching of Christ's voice. It's Christ speaking to his church in this way, not merely hearing about whom, about Christ, but hearing him speak. Thus, it isn't an in whom or about whom or an of whom, but we believe on him whom And we won't believe in him if we haven't heard him. But in fact, we do come to hear him when the gospel conveyed, set down in Scripture, is faithfully taught and explained. One Reformed theologian has talked about it this way. When you hear of someone, he's not present. You don't hear his voice, but the voice of someone else who tells you about him, say, But when you hear someone, you hear his own voice. He is present with you. He's addressing you. And thus the difference in that translation becomes evident, that it feels more natural to talk about preaching about whom, of whom. But by the power of the Spirit, and the faithful opening up of the text, and it's a whole process, the Spirit leading the preacher, the Spirit guiding his voice, the, the Spirit working through him and opening human hearts and minds to receive and understand. Uh, 
then what have you heard? Whom have you heard? You've heard the voice of Christ in preaching. Now, most all English translations don't go with the whom, but uh, in whom or of whom. But it won't take away uh, our key point that, as Luke ten sixteen, our earlier mentioned text says, he who hears you hears me. You want to call that a miracle, a powerful operation of the Spirit? Indeed it is. This is why the Reformed also talked about the necessity of the illumination of the Spirit. Uh, a flat reading of the Bible without the illumination of the Spirit will be a reading in which, though God's Word bounces off our ears, it's not a message received in our hearts. So preaching, as we also know, is an administration of the keys of the kingdom. The Heidelberg Catechism talks about that too in, in Questions and Answers 83 and 84. So that in a preaching, not false preaching or distorted preaching, but faithful preaching, we're not dealing with a mere man and his opinions who stands and offers his opinions for a time, but we're dealing with God's Word, the Bible administered, the Word of God administered to us, ministered to us, and that by the Spirit's blessing. So we're dealing with Christ, and we're dealing with his voice. And God has chosen in the foolishness of preaching. Where's the foolishness of it? Well, the foolishness of the cross. But also, it comes through fallible, flawed human agents. There's not a preacher out there who isn't fallible and flawed. And it doesn't mean, by the way, that any and everything the preacher says is pure word of God, but it does mean the word of God is conveyed. The voice of Christ is heard. The message is received. And if it were merely a man's opinion, then, well, we could just as well be done with it. If, if that were the case, if preaching is, is really just a human affair, well, then we could just leave everyone to their own Bible without comment. Well, the Bible's the Word of God. I read it to you. Now you've heard it. We're all good to go. But in fact, not. We're not good to go because it's so often not understood or not applied or not addressed to our own lives and situations. All the more reason why we need faithful preaching to open up what is perhaps not understood. I mean, we have the famous incident of the Ethiopian eunuch. Do you understand what you read? How can I unless someone explains it to me? Exactly. And so the Reformed churches affirm that the preaching of the gospel is essential to us, necessary for us, and one of those principal means God's pleased to use the channel, the vehicle, through which his word is conveyed and brought into our lives. And so we need to champion this idea, properly understood, that preaching of the word of God faithfully done indeed is the Word of God. Tune in next week as Dr. Beach addresses some objections to this belief that faithful preaching is the Word of God himself. For more podcast episodes, you can find us on our website at minamerica.edu slash podcasts. And wherever you listen to your favorite shows, be sure to search for and subscribe to Mid America Reformed Seminary's Roundtable. I'm Jared Luchibor. Till next time.